Welcome to the first in a series of videos exploring this old gem, Real Fishing, published by Natsume. This is a PlayStation 1 fishing game, and it has a lot of the things that you would expect from PlayStation 1 era games. Um, some very interesting FMV videos, as in this uh, attract mode screen right here where you take the point of view of a fishing lure um, and we go to the opening screen here. So Real Fishing is the first in a series of successful games uh, from Natsume and because Natsume has this reputation for having really relaxing, chilled out games, um, this one is no exception for that. This is a, a really nice, slow-paced game. Please enter your name. I'm going to get my voice out of the way when we listen to the Fishing Master. Um, I'm skipping the name input sequence right here. There's no reason for you to see me type in a name. Um, we're going to walk into the Aqua Room, and we're going to listen to the Fishing Master tell us what the Aqua Room is all about. This will be our home base uh, as we explore our way through this game. This is the Aqua Room, where fishermen come to relax and talk about the one that got away. You'll go to a fishing spot from here by selecting a picture in the album. The fishing spots get more and more challenging. The first spot is a beauty. There's a lot to learn. Good luck. So I'm coming back. We are going to explore um, the first level after we go back to the Aqua Room. Uh, the game does immediately send you to the first level right here, um, but I'm going to take you around the Aqua Room first uh, so you can see what the different things are in your home base right here. Uh, we'll start all the way over here at the left. This is a fish tank. Um, you may keep your fish and put them in these tanks to watch them. Um, this is the river tank or the moving water uh, tank. So if you catch fish from um, some moving streams, that's where they will go. And you can watch them in there and feed them and take care of them. We'll look at that in the next video. This is your still water tank. So um, fish from ponds and lakes will go in this tank. This orange uh, rock here is your fishing license, and those little um, hollows in there are for uh, little balls that you earn as you um, achieve uh, achievements, as you unlock achievements in this game. Now, this is the record um, over here, and the game does read your memory card for other slots, um, even if you're not using one. Um, but if you have a fresh file, Always you have... be ready for a bite when you use a dry fly you do have some default records you have to break. So there is the picture of the fishing master, and he will give you a little verbal um, piece of advice there that I almost stepped on his toes as I was recording this commentary. Um, so you can go to him at different points of the game. He'll say different things. This is our first level. It is the brook. It is the introductory level. Uh, we're going to look at some of the equipment you can use here. You start out with bait. So you can change your bobber, change your hooks, and change your live bait. Um, you can also change to a fly rod, and you can use flies in this level, um, dry flies and wet flies. So we're looking at the different selections here. Unfortunately, the game doesn't tell you which of these are dry and wet. You just have to try them out and, uh, and know what they are. So I'm going to go back to the, um, the, the cane pole here and go to the bait. So it is the bobber and the nymph. We do have some advice right here. Keep the depth of the tackle constant and keep the line tight in front of the tackle. Fish become weary <laughs> when you're here for a while. So it's um, those little bits of advice are not always very well translated from Japanese. Um, like a lot of fishing games that come from Japan, the, the instructions aren't always exactly right, although this is better than uh, another game, the Blue Marlin, that I um, have made a number of videos on. So when you get a bite and you and you cast towards those fish's shadows, you can get a bite here. And with the trout, they're fairly easy to hook. They'll put the bait in their mouth. You have a good wide window to hit the X button or um, a directional key, a left or right, will will do the trick. Um, the, the fights are going to go quickly here, so I'm going to try to describe them as fast as I can. The, uh, the bite on a fish is when they have it in their mouth and they're in the window of when you can hook them. So you hit that X button um, or, the, or the directional button to hook them. When they're running, 
you want to release all of the um, all the buttons when a fish is running. When a fish turns and is thrashing, you want to hold the directional button to keep tension on that line, and you'll have to watch carefully um, as we go through that. Now I'm fishing with a wet fly, so the wet fly goes underwater just like the bait does. And again, we're going to watch the trout take this bait. They turn their body. We set the hook. Right now the fish is thrashing, so you hold a directional button. Sometimes the fish will release the thrash and start running, in which case you need to release all buttons again. Um, sometimes the fish will then turn towards you when you can reel. Um, generally, you want to reel when the fish is facing towards you and have nothing going on when the fish is running. Um, so they'll thrash at the end or turn. You can also watch when a fish is running, the background is moving quickly. Now, when you catch a fish right here, the fish will reach the surface. You do have to push the X button one more time to have that fish come out of the water towards you. So I'm going to switch to a dry fly now, and I'm going to stay with the dry fly because that's my preference on levels like this as we um, work to unlock the first bubble or the first ball of our fishing license. Dry flies, as you can see right there, the bites happen at the surface. Um, that'll happen later with surface lures like poppers in another level. Um, but the fish will strike it at the surface, and you have a very narrow window of frames to push that X button to set the hook uh, during those bites. But um, it doesn't take quite as much um, careful skill and patience watching for a fish, especially some of the harder species later on that, that have really finicky bites on underwater baits. So this is the fighting technique. When the fish thrashes, I let go. The fish runs, the background's moving fast, and then as soon as the background slows down, you have to watch the um, the backgrounds in this game. Luckily, they're they're pretty well rendered um, when you're watching it on a, on a screen. Uh, when the background slows down, then you can use a directional button to turn the fish and start reeling, or you can just start reeling. Um, I usually use both to directional button to turn the fish and start reeling at the same time so that we can maximize that. Um, there are some hidden mechanics in this game that are um, not very clear to the player, and I'm, I'm sure that's by design. Um, fish exhaustion um, rates are something that um, I believe you could explore. I'm not sure how they work, um, if there's really anything there, or if everything just is kind of random. If you just kind of work through back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, um, you can get a lot of these fish in. I don't know if there's really much in wearing fish down here. It doesn't seem to make a huge difference. Um, so, for example, fish are running a lot. They don't really seem to tire out much. It just seems like if you can fight an error-free fight, you can get them. Um, sometimes you'll get bad luck, and the fish will just continue running until they reach the edge of a screen, in which case they will get off the hook. So there is a hidden um, counter for where the fish is on that level screen. And if a fish does reach one of the boundaries of where that screen is, they will get off the hook and your, your lure will come out um, from wherever they left the screen. So there are some times where you'll hook a fish and they'll do nothing but run, 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 and be off the screen. To unlock the second level in this game, you have to simply catch 10 trout on this stage. So it doesn't matter the size, 10 trout on this stage. As you work through each stage, you'd usually have a um, fish size to catch to get a bubble on your license and then unlock another level. So for this one, you're catching 10 trout. The next level, you've got to catch a fish of a certain size. Um, to get the last uh, bubble on the first round of your license, you have to catch and release 100 fish total. Um, once you've done that, you need to go back through your stages again, and then you have to beat the default record. So, for example, the default record, if you don't have any uh, memory card in, um, or if you're just looking for the size here, um, you have to beat a trout of 13.8 inches or more. So the second time through this level, you have to catch a trout of 13.8 inches or more. I believe, although I can't prove, I believe that fish of that size probably don't spawn um, until you have already gone through your entire license um, because it would be kind of silly to have a, hit an achievement before your license is filled up to uh, to go through the second round of those balls in your license when you have unlocked an achievement you will hear a little um, harp jingle when you pull the fish out of the water. We'll listen for it here as I'm going towards catching my 10th trout, but you've seen I've switched away from the live bait and the wet flies, and I go exclusive to the dry fly. And that's just because I am used to setting that hook. Um, I don't know what mechanics 
control sizes of fish that spawn using different kinds of lures. The game tells you that fish get wary or weary, as you'll see sometimes when, when it's translated. Um, and the fishing master will listen here. We do not have the harp jingle, so we have not gotten to 10 yet. Fishing Master does tell you don't use a dry fly when the fish are weary. And the game sometimes tells you that if fish get weary or wary to leave the level and reload it. So I don't know if there is a hidden mechanic of like fish wariness or, or fish awareness. I mean, in real life that happens in when you're fishing pools and streams. Um, when the pool is disrupted enough, fish will move on in real life to a different part of your stream. If, if your shadow is over the water, you're causing disturbance, uh, they will get warier and will leave the area. So that's a little bit of realism that I wouldn't be surprised if Natsume built in. Uh, also, from my lessons, though, on the Blue Marlin, there's a lot of things in that manual and in the game where it tells you something works a certain way, but the game code doesn't actually work that way. And it's just hidden enough for you go, well, okay, I guess when the sun is on this side, I need to change my lure for where the sun is, or I need to change my depth if the weather is a certain condition. But the way the game's programmed, it really makes no difference. They were just building in some um, extra choices for you that really had no consequence, but you'd never know that as a player until we had access to uh, ROM readers. <laughs> So we're working our way through to the end of our first level here with our uh, trout. I'm guessing these are supposed to be brook trout. Um, I haven't looked up a s species on this. The uh, the second level, we're going to be catching char, which is another salmonid, salmonid um, species like our trout here. And we go back to the regular music here. And here's our sound effects, the uh, the bird calling. Um, we are getting close to the 10 trout, though. And this, this first level is... is Pretty simple to to get your fish in, meant to be introductory, get you some things. Um, you can lose your equipment if fish are fighting. You can break your line and lose your hook or lose a lure, and you do not get access to that lure again. Um, so you, ha you have to be kind of careful when you're going for some of the bigger fish or if you're trying to be in a hurry to catch one of the bigger fish um, and you're risking breaking those off. You can lose a, for example, you could lose all of your dry flies, and then you wouldn't be able to use a dry fly on this level anymore on that save file. So I usually save often uh, when I have that, and if I lose a lure, I will just reload my save file. I do have a series, uh, by the way, if you do like those backgrounds and that music, I have a series that's called Real Fishing Relaxation. I'll put a link to that playlist in the description here. And that is where I just have 15-minute segments of just watching and listening to um, the JPEGs that are animated on these levels. And right there, you heard our harp jingle, which tells us this is our 10th fish, and we have unlocked a new achievement. So we're going to return to the aqua room. You'll see very briefly um, that the stream level has been unlocked, but we're going to go to our fishing license. And we hear that harp jingle again, and we get our first achievement ball on the fishing license. That's your, your achievement tracker. And we're going to go back to Fishing Master. Take your time. And he tells us to take our time. Thank you, Fishing Master. So that is a simple walkthrough of the first level of real fishing for PlayStation 1. Uh, we've looked around the aqua room and we've caught the 10 trout. The rest of this series will be looking at just how to catch the fish in each level. Um, I won't be doing long commentaries of long grinding segments looking for fish of a certain size. Once you know how to hook and how to fight the fish of each level, um, there isn't really much more you can learn besides just picking up the game and going. But if you are having trouble, how do, how do I hook those bitterling? How do I hook those different kinds of fish? I will be making a series of these that you can watch. Um, if you want to check out the Real Fishing Relaxation, each level is included in there, so you can watch. 15 minutes um, to put on in the background of just this level with sound effects um, and a nice uh, moving JPEG image. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. I always like to hear feedback from someone, so if there's something you'd like to see, um, something you liked about these, something you'd like to know, um, if I didn't cover it here, do let me know in a comment or on Twitter where I am the same name, active underscore A-T-E. We will see you next time in the stream, Fishing for Char.